Hi everybody, welcome to the Queer Network. My name is Justin Gerhard. This is another season of Queer from the Couch and we're kicking it off with Thaddeus here in New York City. Yes. He is going to school for ad design here in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, but you've recently gotten some traction as a model for American Eagle. Tell us a little bit about how this all happened and like yes. what you're being known for right now. 2018 of August, the campaign came out for American Eagle Next Level. Okay. Mm -hmm. I went on the casting um, because they had came across my Instagram. Okay. And Which is, what's your Instagram? Tell everybody. Um, my Instagram is at Hippie Potter, because I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. Nice, <laughs> nice. Check it out. He's also an artist, so yes. like all of that you need to see. It's H-I-P-P-Y-P-O-T-T-E-R. Amazing. Um, but, yeah, so I went in for casting. I was in, actually in class, and I was talking to a professor, and I was like, hey, I'm not going to be there today. Um, I mm -hmm. have like, a thing, a casting to go to. And she was like, Thaddy, you can't <laughs> just leave class, Thaddy. I was like... I, I need got to. you. It's going to be amazing. Like, it's going to change the yeah. world. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to change things. And so I go on the casting, and um, I'm aware that it's for American Eagle, but mm -hmm. like, I'm not really sure of like if it's going to go. Right. I go into the bathroom, and like, I put on these jeans, and then I'm just like, wow. You had a moment. Yeah, it was like when Cinderella put on the glass slipper. Ooh. I promise it was like my Cinderella moment. I do want to talk about body image in, in terms of the queer culture, in terms of gay culture, in yes. terms of just what society has said about body image. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds like this moment was, this Cinderella moment, there's some backstory to that. Yes, so, there is. Yeah, like what is it like normally for you? Okay, so I'm 6'6", six, six, um, I'm a really tall guy, and mm -hmm. like I have a build to me as well. I played football for four years in high school, okay. so I've always been like, I've always had this like, broad kind mm -hmm. of built with me mm -hmm. and so um i've always been stylish too but i would have to be smart about being stylish because i couldn't necessarily wear the things that were featured on gq magazine because right. they th the pants of banana republic didn't run in my size or brooks the brothers they didn't run in my size mm -hmm. so um at an earlier time i realized that i was going to have to think smarter about how I would do fashion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, GQ's slogan is actually like, look sharp, live smart. And so I was like, let me just live smarter about that. Uh -huh. There's so, gotta be a way to do this. Yes, there's yeah. gotta be a way to do this. Yeah. Um, and so I would wear like pants like these, like mm -hmm. um, pants that aren't jeans. Yeah. But like chinos or like mm -hmm. slacks or like just... And why do those fit better? Is it easier to yes. get them just tailored? Or like, do, is it just that the store is provided a pant that actually fit your... I feel like these are easier to get into because they're not really... I don't know, I feel like denims have to hug your body. Right. And denims are like all American, so mm -hmm. like everybody, like that's a big thing. And like with guys of my size, usually we run into problems with like the height of our um, like pants leg right. or like the overall fit or like the waist or like mm -hmm. the thigh area. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of like components to yeah. being a guy of size. Yeah. So when I tried on the jeans, um, the feeling that I felt first was that, okay, these get past my thighs, whoa. These fall at my ankles at a reasonable, like, you uh -huh. know, length. And then, like, the waist was just, like, so amazing. Like, it hugged my waist, and I was just really blown away. Do you know why? Well, like, yeah. What, well, what did they do differently? They do, like, okay, so the Next Level campaign is basically, like, all-inclusive. It's for, like, denims that, it's for denim, it's denim, but it's denim for everybody. Okay. Because it so, should be for everybody. Yes. I mean, we've said it's for everybody, but we were never creating the style for everybody. Right. Yeah. So, like, it's really, like, all-inclusive. So, mm -hmm. like, they literally are welcoming all body types. And it was really amazing to be a part of the campaign. So, after I put these jeans on and I go outside and I show um, Laura, she's just like, wow, these fit perfectly. We're, we're looking for somebody just like you. Mm -hmm. And so, when I heard that, I was just, like, it was a moment where I was just, so like overwhelmed with excitement because I've never heard those words. Right. We're always before. trying to fit into a box half the yes. time when we go to these modeling castings. Yes, especially because modeling castings in New York is just like, yeah, it's like cutthroat. Mm -hmm. Did you always want to be a model? Is that something that like found you or you were like, no, this is something I want to pursue? Okay, so I knew there was a possibility for me being a model. I just didn't know how I would go about doing that and right. how to pursue that when people would take me seriously. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like model is a term that everybody kind of uses to like hide behind. Yeah. If you could just like 
uh, dress nice or if you um, take lots of like Instagram pictures people would, would like categorize you as like a model I mean I think in our day that's yeah. how people become models mm -hmm. there's still the traditional way of, of it happening but yes. you're right like Instagram is, is a new calling card for models like it's, right. it's a way to get traction it is but also some of it kind of waters down what in essence what like being a model mm -hmm. is and it kind of like creates an image or builds an image um, to use as myself, like, an image that's like, could I fit into that? Yes. Like, am I going to be able to belong to that? Is there a space for me mm -hmm. in that world? Mm -hmm. And so, knowing that I was going to have to create a lane for myself earlier on, I was like, well, if this is the industry I want to be in, I'll have to create that lane for myself. So, yeah. I guess I better buy some real estate. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> yes. How do you feel, and as, as a model too, how have you felt as what people call a plus size model? And that word, I want to know how you feel about mm -hmm. that word. Okay, the tricky thing is because like all inclusivity and like body positivity have become very mainstream now, uh -huh. even I'm not even considered a plus size model. So I'm more so like an extended size model because okay. there's like a difference too. Yes. So like there's like extended size and then there's like plus size. Okay. And I guess because I'm taller and like I'm not as wide, I'm not considered as a plus size model. Right. But I guess from the outside looking in, if you don't know all like the specific The terms, levels, yeah. It's and like, I think that's where we're at in so many ways mm -hmm. in our world right now is that we're we're using so many more labels than we ever have. Labels are clearly important for the representation. Yes. If, you, if we want to differentiate that you're not a plus size model, mm -hmm. but then what's the new term? You're an extended size model. Yeah. And I'm so just it's like, like, oh my God, there's just a lot to learn for people. And then what is the line between extended and plus size? And does exactly. it really even matter? Or is there, should there even be a line to differentiate that? Exactly. Why be a plus size model? You just, you could be like a model who is plus size. Right. Like, Artists, like, especially, like, artists in the LGBT community, some of them that I know that are trying to, like, fill, like, a void or, like, a space, uh -huh. they would rather just be an artist, not a artist who, or, like, not, like, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes. First and foremost, you're a model. Yes. First and foremost, you're... You're an artist. Yeah. Being queer, being LGBT. I just so happen to be. Exactly. That's a part of me. So that's an interesting thing that we're moving towards mm -hmm. in, our, in our world because we have wanted to... We wanted to be proud of this, I'm queer. Yes. And yet, then when people start labeling us as just that, we're mm -hmm. like, but wait, I'm also just a human being. Right. I'm also just an artist. I'm also just a model. I'm also just a, a painter. Yes. I just happen to be queer or gay or non-binary. I just want to do what I love. Mm -hmm. So if you want to put me in that category to group with that, then I wouldn't mind. It's not right. like an insult to me. Like, it's just something that I just personally, like... I just happen to be plus size, but right. like, you know, I could like lose 30 pounds today and then what? I'm still going to be a model. Exactly. You know, and I'm still going to be representing for somebody who isn't being represented in the media or the industry. Which I think that's a great segue into just queer culture, gay culture, because I do think there's a differentiation there's there. There's a huge difference. And then also just even mainstream culture, because yes. we are moving into a place where RuPaul's Drag Race being in mainstream, you know, it's bringing so much light to the queer community. Yes. And even using that word can kind of get dicey, because certain people don't always appreciate it, but I feel like we're reclaiming it in certain ways, and even the Queer Network, by calling it the Queer Network, we were very conscious that this may cause some to be a little bit uncomfortable, but we wanted to push our community and then even the, the straight community to reclaim this word mm -hmm. as like a way to bring us all under the same umbrella rather than separate ourselves between gay, lesbian, bisexual, trans. Like those are important for representation, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I think we all want similar things when it comes to equality and mm -hmm. acceptance and just general love. I feel like I've gone on a major tangent right now. <laughs> no, but I, I like it because it kind of brings in a segue. It creates a space for all mm -hmm. of us who are different to kind of like have a family and belong. Yeah. And that's what I love about the term queer because it's just like you could be non-binary and still like... Yes. So like you... Because there's always a pressure even like with like different groups inside of the LGBT community. So, so like, let's let's take the gay community. Yes. This is one that I would I would associate with. Do you associate as gay as yes. well? So let's talk about body image within the gay community because that Yeah. How does that feel as as an extended size model or just somebody who's taller? Mhm. Mm let's let's talk about that. Yeah. Like, let's really talk about that cuz 
me, my body image in the gay community, technically, um, I love how I look, and uh-huh. I love like my shape and everything, but I also know what category I would fit into the gay like, community. With the, and by categories, I think we mean mm-hmm. that like there's the, 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 oh, come on, give me some of them. What are they? Like jocks versus... Mm-hmm. Um, Bears versus twinks Cubs, and twinks. There's a bunch of like, and I feel like I'm pretty loved in the gay community. So mm-hmm. I like it. Does like to me, I don't really feel any discrimination in that aspect. Okay, but also with like being of color and being queer in mm-hmm. certain spaces that aren't like as diverse. Mm-hmm. Like if I go to certain like clubs that aren't like diverse, then I do feel. Like, I'm on the outside, Mm -hmm. in a way. But I also feel like creating spaces like Queer Network and other things that just... I feel like if it was a queer club, Mm -hmm. which would be really interesting to have. Yeah. If it was a queer club, I feel like the vibe would be totally different. It would be open and accepting, but um, gay culture could be very, like, divided. I know. It can be very cutthroat. Yeah. And I think, you know, we... We all want this acceptance and love and equality mm-hmm. in our subsect groups, but I think sometimes we've fallen into some of the same traps that uh, heterosexuals fell into yeah. in their evolution mm-hmm. to to becoming where they are. And I mean, we live in a time when men are finally being challenged. Old white men are finally being challenged on their actions for mm-hmm. the first time in so long, yes. and it's painful right now to watch. And it's. It's not fair all the time, but it's necessary for us to shift this focus away from what it means to be a man. From mm-hmm. your experience as a black queer man, mm-hmm. I mean, the word masculinity also has its own pain to it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Did you grow up in that, or was that... Um, did you feel like you could express let's see. Thaddeus as Thaddeus, or was there a lot of filters? Um... I feel like growing up, I've always been kind of praised for like being myself no matter what the circumstances was mm-hmm. were. At the end of the day, I, I'm happy with who I am. You know? Where did that confidence come from? Um, I feel like it came from just me knowing that I'm good enough. I, I feel like I had such a great support system. I have, mm-hmm. I have like great, I had great friends and I had like a great sense of self. Yeah. And I know that me being gay didn't make me any less of a leader. It didn't make me any less of um, an athlete. It didn't yeah. make me any less of a presence. Yeah. Like, if anything, it just added to me as a person. I feel like it didn't take anything away. So me being, like, secure in myself. And I feel like also my size helped, too, because I feel like I was bigger, always bigger. So if somebody tried to combat yeah. me and my sexuality it probably would be like the fact that I have like this fact of intimidation before that layer too. Right. Which nobody I wanted feel like, to mess with that necessarily. Right. So I feel like that's a privilege too. Yeah. That I, that I think about often because like Which half, interesting. half of the time like I feel like people wouldn't even like even if they did express like an issue with my sexuality they would never say it to me directly because yeah. of how intimidating I might look, even right. though I'm like literally the sweetest thing. But I mean, we're getting <laughs> we're getting this right. You're feeling this on that side of the camera too, because I am. It's <laughs> like it's like um like yeah. a, like you're a teddy bear. Like it's pretty like, much. But I look like a grizzly bear. Yes. Like, so <laughs> which is amazing. To, to to there there again brings up the body image and just how much we place on that initial moment of what somebody looks like Mm -hmm. based as opposed to once you get to know them and realize that like oh no this is their actual personality behind that image right i feel like there's this poison that is it's starting to seep into or it's been seeping into gay culture when it comes to body image is Mm -hmm. there a way to move away from that like and how do we change that well, I feel like myself, I've tried to like rewrite that narrative mm-hmm. through everything that I express, where I'm putting more of myself in my art. Mm-hmm. And so I'm rewriting this narrative of how like guys of my size and built and color are seen by pairing them with like other images as well. So like florals, mm-hmm. flowers, butterflies, mm-hmm. doves, I'm really right. big on doves, and like just Focusing on the duality between the two. Right. And that it, you can have a, a, like a big black man. Who's super soft. Yes. And that's not weak. 
Exactly. Oh that wow, is, wow, 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 That is celebrated. Yes, yes. I actually focus a lot on like, um, like sensitivity and masculinity, mm -hmm. and how like it's okay to be soft and like it's okay to cry and like yeah. you are worthy and like there's all these messages that I'm like putting mm -hmm. in my art that I feel like not only I feel like it's self therapy for me. Yeah. That's probably why I'm so positive all the time because I'm literally like radiating like what I want to see so I'm yes. creating like this environment for me even if I'm ever feeling down I can just look at something that I created and like go back into myself and be like oh yeah you are that or you do right. feel that and these are like um body positive messages that I can kind of help that could help little like tidbits that can help rewrite the narrative and mm -hmm. like can be a solace and like be like a safe haven right which as I'm listening to this, I, I, I take that as, as a little piece of advice for anybody out there who yes. feels alone. And sometimes it's, it's interesting we always say, like, just be yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's getting confusing because not everybody knows what it means to be yourself. Mm -hmm. And so part of that ex exploration, I think, you know, artistry and expressing ourselves is a part of figuring out who we are. Yes. And, and when you don't, see yourself being represented you may just want to represent yourself yeah which is what I feel like you're doing with this art you're like I don't see this out there so I'm gonna do it yes and so I think that sort of is a gauge on when you're at home thinking like who am I you got to think about the things that make you tick things that make you excited things that make you passionate about something or what are you passionate about and those things that are real to you exactly that's the most powerful piece of information that I could give to mm -hmm. anybody mm -hmm. or anything, a piece of advice is just to be yourself and know that that is enough. Because mm -hmm. like, being yourself is one thing, but you have to know mm -hmm. that that is enough. Yes. You know? And so, okay, I'm, I'm going to, let's, let's talk about that, what it, what it means to know yourself. How do you mm -hmm. know yourself? Well, you have, to, you have to take care of yourself. You have to like... Practice a lot of self-love and self-therapy mm -hmm. and just like really like love yourself. Because I think in the media and in culture and in our society, the Western society, mm -hmm. there's a lot of messages telling you that you need this, you need that in order to be happy. Mm -hmm. Everything external. Right. And so I think that's where we get a lot of these messages of I have to do all these other things in order to be happy or, right. or, or know myself. But I think what you're saying, it's more about what's on the inside and like that internal work of just knowing that I'm enough. The just as is, I am. I feel like people, like we're very eager to water ourselves, mm -hmm. but we're so quick to look for other sources of water mm. when the water is inside of ourselves. You know? That's well spoken. Yeah. That is a really beautiful way to understand that. That like we look for the water in other places. And we already but... have all the nutrients within our, within mm -hmm. ourselves. Like everything that you're looking for, you already possess. Right. So the knowing yourself is just a matter of turning that focus inward. Yes. Which sounds to some like super new age spiritual and like <laughs> hippy dippy. But what re it, so it is that simple in a way. Well, it takes a lot of hard work, I guess, I'm pretty sure, because, I mean, what comes good, easy for most might not come easy for everybody, right. but so it's, it's also a learning process. And it sounds like through your art, and even through your modeling, you've been able to discover a little more of who you are on the inside. Yes. And express that, and then people see it, and they relate to it, because there's that kid who's living in the middle of nowhere that's watching your Instagram that is the same size as you or is the same skin tone as you or feels like they have the same demeanor as you and they're finally feeling like they're represented. And that is the craziest thing to me. I get so many messages on Instagram mm -hmm. and like I just, I'm like so full. Like I'm yeah. just so full because it's so amazing to know that like my, I'm radiating and you're picking up my wavelengths yes. through whatever. Yes. Yeah. I know it sounds like I'm like super hippie, but like I just am really in tune with like myself. Yeah. And like absolutely. I feel like that's what it's about. Yeah. There is a quote that I read in an article um, that you did with Out Magazine. You said, I, I draw what I need to see. I draw for me 10 years ago. Yes. Explain. Let's unpack that a little bit. All right. Okay. So... There is literally so much power in being yourself. Mm -hmm. People say be yourself all the time, but like it wasn't until like I actually started like 
truly embracing who I was and like knowing that this is how I am and not trying to like doll down or give anybody the diet version of me. Mm 